monofilament, six pound monofilament um, with that six pound fluorocarbon leader. I like to use the monofilament um, just so I can whole hop. I don't have to worry about it, the line freezing up. But then adding a swivel with the fluorocarbon leader. What I like about the swivel is it prevents the line twists on the, on the presentation. But what I like about the section of fluorocarbon itself is when you get to the bottom of the ice and it's real rigid and you're trying to pull a walleye up through the ice and he's fighting back and forth, um, you don't have to worry about line nicks with the fluorocarbon like you do um, with the monofilament. You know, it's much more abrasion resistant. And if you look at the bottom of a hole, it's never smooth. It's always jagged and whatnot. So fighting that walleye back and forth, I just lost less fish with that section of fluorocarbon for your leader. Uh, for walleye, I probably use uh, fluoro and mono most often, six to eight pound test, depending on depth. Uh, if I'm fishing, say, four to six feet of water, some of the real shallow fish, I'll fish a lot of fluoro. If I'm fishing a little bit deeper, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll run with mono. I, it's by, by lakes. Blacks, I'm using five pound, five pound suffix floral. Day in, day out, that's my line. That's all I'm using. Uh, every year I order like 24 spools of it. Um, it's proven to handle fish, you know, 28 inch fish down to three, you know, two or three pound fish. It has a nice action to it. It literally rockets with a quarter ounce spoon and five pound line. It just rockets down there. I don't break off a lot. Now, if I'm going to Lake of the Woods, you know, it's dirty or whatever, I'll bump up to six. But six for walleyes is about the heaviest I go in any body of water. Like, if you're going to go to Winnipeg, if you're going to Winnipeg, I just, and that's the only time I get line weird, just because you could potentially in that lake catch a 17, 18 pound walleye. Well, I don't want to get caught with my pants down with eight pound test line battle in an 18 pound fish potentially, you know? So I, I rig 10 pounds up there. I go 10 pounds because A, I want to stick them in the face if I do get a 15 pounder and I want to make sure I get them in and I'm not worried about five feet of ice and the fish is over here and I'm over here and that line's like seesawing between us both, you know? You know, if I'm going to be walleye fishing, um, it just depends. You know, if I go up to like Green Bay or Bay to Knock, I really prefer, I like fishing in a shack and I like using um, braided line with a long fluorocarbon leader. Um, fiver? Five pound test. Kind of a weird one. Um, I'll run six pound on a lot of stuff too, but it's amazing. Um, I like thinner lines in general for imparting act action to spoons. And once you get to six, seven, and eight, it kind of drastically changes. Seven and eight is almost like cordage compared to five pound test. And the action that it imparts and the extra spin on your lures, especially if you're not swiveling up a little bit above those spoons, those are the details that actually make a lot of difference on a tough bite. My favorite ice line for walleyes, uh, I used to use a five or to seven pound test, and now I'm using three or four pound sunline. It's lighter and I'm getting more bites. And even in dark water, I've shot TV shows on Lake of the Woods where I brought the wrong gear and I brought panfish tackle and got ribbed the whole way up there, but I caught all the big fish. Is that a coincidence? On three pound test and two pound test, I landed 28 to 30 inch walleyes. And so I believe even in tannin stained lakes or bog stained lakes, dark water, murky lakes, light line just works better. There are fisheries where the fish are just dumb, dumb fish and they bite on anything, but that's not always the case, but it doesn't hurt to pack light line. So I'm, I'm using a lot lighter line than I ever did before, three or four pound sunline uh, ice for, for walleyes and uh, it works. And, and the only time I go a little bit heavier is if I'm ripping big baits and you're going to hit a pike or, you know, thick ice and that fish is way down there, it's hard to turn them up there, but then it doesn't hurt to have a small gaff just hook them in the mouth and pull them up. With walleyes, I use a lot of braid, especially if I'm jigging. If I'm dead sticking, I'll tend to use mono more, but uh, I use a lot of eight, 10, six pound braid with a fluorocarbon leader. I like to use a small swivel to connect the braid to the leader, because most of the stuff that I'm jigging is gonna work up twist. Whether it's a spoon, whether it's a jigging wrap style lure, you know, you're, you're working twist, and so that, that, that uh, swivel is a, just a good connection point. Now, I have seen it, it's like jigging in the summertime with a, you know, off the boat is that 
there's times where, uh, especially in clear water and stuff, where, you know, really clear water, I'll, I'll just run straight uh, model. You know, I don't know what it is. And, and some bites are different too. The kind of bites where, you know, you, you jig that lure hard and the fish comes up and responds and you keep jigging and they just punch it. That's, that's a bite where the braid works exceptionally well with fast action graphite rod. There's other times where you jig it, the fish comes up, you jig it and then they sink and you hold it and tweet and work them, work them, work them. And all of a sudden you're just kind of hanging it and the fish is one with you. And then, boy, but, and all of a sudden you lift up, oh, there he is. Okay, that's the type of bite where monofilament can really save the day because you might not be able to feel the fish quite as abruptly or distinctly, but the fish also can't feel you. And so there's times on a tough off bite where I, you know, monofilament just saves the day because it's just a, it's just a different type of bite detection. Um, sometimes too, I think the fish will feel it lifting as you're working it, and when they feel it, when they feel that bait slide out of their mouth, they'll choke up on it more. So, and with monofilament, it seems like it does that better because it's not so distinct or abrupt. And so, you know, there's a time and place for both. I always have both rigged up. I'll usually typically start with a straight up braided combo setup. And uh, if I'm missing fish, rolling fish, just know it's a tough bite, then I'll I'll try mono and see if it makes a difference. Uh, that's another good question. I actually have two choices there. If I'm on the Great Lakes. In Lake Erie, for example, uh, and there's really a lot of big fish, and they don't seem to be quite as educated. And I'm telling you, the Erie fish aren't as quite as educated to ice fishing. I'm part, part of that's probably because it only freezes every five years, right? Uh, I like to use uh, the, the, the line that I like to use right now is Berkeley's uh, Ultra 8 in 10 pound test, but I'll use a 3 pound, 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. Um, and the leader is probably more me than anything else. Most of the other walleye fishing that I do, where we're not dealing with 10 to 12 pound fish all the time, even if I go up to Lake Winnipeg, often I just do a full spool of 100% uh, fluorocarbon, but I use 10 pound test. And in those cases, it's because I can peel off that 20 feet at the end of the day if it's twisted up too much and just retie. Walleye is same thing, I like a fluorocarbon coated uh, monofilament line all the way up to about 10 pound test. And then when I get, uh, and, and I'll use eight or 10 pound test if I get somewhere that has beastly fish, something that's over six, seven pounds in that, in that range there, then I wanna have something that's got a little bit more gusto, a lot of abrasion resistance to it. But most importantly, I like line that refuses to coil and that's the part of the fluorocarbon that I like so much is that it will hang straighter and keep my line, my rod tip in contact with my bait and that is the key to detecting bites, especially on finicky bites. A low stretch mono, I'm looking, I don't want it real stretchy <clears throat> and no, no matter what size the lure is, it has to take the kinks out of the line so everything you do up here is happening down here. If you get coils in your line, you're going like this and the lure is doing nothing. You know, you gotta make sure that you know what that lure is doing. So if you give it a little flick or, you know, work it across the hole, whatever it is to, you know, trigger a strike or. So while I line, I, main line, I'm gonna go with uh, Nanofil. I'm gonna go up to about a 10 pound test line is what I typically use. Uh, even if the water is really clear, a lot of times what I'll do is adjust my snell length or my leader length down there. My typical leader is probably a two foot. That way I can, change lures a few times, maybe get it up to 18 inches or so before I have to retie. But if I got in gin clear water and I felt like the fish were coming in but spooking for some reason, one of the first things I'll do is increase my leader length, maybe all the way out to four feet, eight feet, whatever I think I have to do, plus downsize just a little. So just keeping those spools of, for walleyes, I'd say from six pound all the way up to probably 10 pound test fluorocarbon with you, 100% fluorocarbon is what I use, Berkeley. Um, just keep those spools with you because it's real easy just to, since between the two you've got a little barrel swivel, it's real easy to take off your 10 pound and put on eight pound, take off your eight pound, put on a six foot liter, six pound. Uh, just that versatility is a, a real easy thing and not have to redo your main line all the time.